This Monday Night Football props and NFL Week 12 recap edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Bet365. Bet365 is offering new users a thousand dollar no sweat bet. Sign up today at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash bet365. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hrofbets.com and use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. We're also brought to you by Factor Meals. Head to factormeals.com slash SGPN50 and use code SGPN50 to get 50% off. Hey, this is Larry the Cable Guy, and you're listening to SGPN. Let her run and get her done. To the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner of picks, right? Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Well, I mean, what an afternoon. What a day. Uh, Sean getting hotter than normal. I dodged some bullets. I think we all dodged some bullets. Public had a day. I'd imagine uh, most of you and your, oh, your really? square friends sitting on all the chalk, <laughs> cash and tickets. Uh, I feel great. Oh, pretty I'm, good. Pretty good day for the show. We went three and one on our locks. You two and oh, I uh, one and one didn't hit the money line dog. Uh, Baker Baker left us a little short there And the Texans, man, you could not get closer to sending that game into overtime. But of course my Eagles, AKA the birds, I think we have it great as a loss, but the, the line did close at two and a half. So some people who bet it late got it as a win. I would imagine a lot of people like myself, betting it at the three got as a push. That was a nice result. Amazing game. We'll get into that. And if you listen to the prop show or the Vison show, Tyler Higby, two touchdowns, 30 to one. Let's go. Yeah, the pregame show I gave out the Derrick Henry touchdown ladder. Yes, exactly. I uh, feel like we were positioned for the AT Perry receiving ladder, and that just uh, blew up in our faces. I mean, uh, Chris Olave and Shahid go out. How does he not get that ladder going, right? Yeah, I don't know. Not not everyone's meant for the uh, the heights, you know what I mean? Ladder lifestyle isn't isn't meant for everyone. Chat is lit. Uh Showtimers saying I made it to the live show. What's up Showtimers? Devin uh Turner in the chat saying go birds. Go birds. Uh Browns what happened? Yeah, I was on the I was on the Broncos there. Kind of an ugly what game. What happened? There. I'll tell you what happened. I swapped off them. They were they had been entered in the sheet for yeah. a matter of seconds, and I Brian said, briefly did have them. Get as that shit out of here. That should count as two wins. Felt like it was going to be a game where the 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 Browns once again were playing a, a close one score game, and then and DTR went out, and it turns yeah. out DTR might be better than PJ Walker. I don't well, know, PJ I'm Walker sure. off the bench as well, but yeah, uh, three and two in our circuit millions, would uh, including the Houston plus one, which was so close to getting to overtime. Our only loser was the Commanders. Uh, well, obviously Houston was also a loser, but <laughs> Commanders <laughs> Commanders was a loser because it was all right. This is completely fucked. But yeah, was I know you were on your uh, sojourn ride. But if you watch that game, if Ron Rivera and Eric Bieniemy, if the two of them could come together and understand that a fourth and one, you run a QB sneak, it might have been a different game. But alas, Man, that's, that's why like he's a bad forty coach. points, right? I, I know that's okay. what would so, someone would say who didn't watch the game. Because you would look at the you would look at the final score and go, oh, a couple of fourth and ones aren't making a difference in the game. Uh, trust me, it would have made a huge fucking. Difference. I, I I believe you. I I uh, I, I do think that it prop. You think I got you on the right side of that game. <laughs> All right, so a couple couple play box scores misleading maybe. Oh, and Bills Mafia, my mentions DMs, they are open. Was hearing way more about Bills Mafia before the game, Ryan. After when Jalen Hurts puts five touchdowns on your ass. Getting a little quiet over here on social media. At Sean T. Green, I'm ready to go. Gabe Davis and Stefan Diggs doing the flap in the wings. It has ended. Everyone in the history of the NFL who's done the eagle flapping in Lincoln Financial, it's ended poorly for them. It has. A, if you've not practiced this at the level of like a professional TikToker, 
A- anytime someone tries to flap their wings, it looks stupid. <laughs> anytime you have to practice the motion, you have to look flu. Uh, and stay tuned. There's going to be a. If you didn't see Sean's uh, Sean's uh, tout video, oh. uh, very Dave, Dave saying Sean's drunk AF. Well, Easy saying facts. Well, first off, I've had a couple of cocktails, and who are you, the uh, over-serving police? I walked here to the studio. He's jealous. He doesn't have a job that, where he can um, per- <laughs> my job. perform it. Yes, I'm doing my job. Yeah, did I have a drink like nine glasses of whiskey? Did I at some point decide that the more whiskey I drank, the better the Eagles played? Uh, yeah, and it all worked out. Much like Ryan, uh, another oh. the slot. How's the slot? Quick tales from the slot machine. Oh, I thought you were gonna give me a Lenny Dykstra update. No, I wish. Uh, <laughs> so you know the journey with the slot machine. Five and zero to start out. Then I had my first losing week, the last regular Sunday week. But then I was so we at- only tr- every win's a win. Because I feel like some of the wins have been bigger than, than others. Some have, some have been bigger than others. Maybe you were like seven and a half and zero. Oh. Well, cause I, I, so, I mean, yes, really like <laughs> we're talking unit size. I was up. I mean, if we're comparing my NFL units, it was probably, I'm up about six units gave maybe one unit back the last week, maybe one and one and a half. So I would say I would uh, like four and a half units up. And then uh, I was out in Vegas all week, hanging out with the in-laws. I got to hang out with Derek big balls. It was, it was a fun yeah, just killing some time. Went over just, to Cirque. I introduced just so we're clear, I, Derek and Big Balls, not uh, your in-laws or any no. so part of your family. No, no okay, no, not Fri- yet. Friends, not yet. We'll friendsgiving. Got lot, it. Yeah, drinksgiving. That Derek was saying, <laughs> hanging out with Derek what, the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving was a lot of fun. Uh, many cocktails were enjoyed. Love those guys. Um, so then I had that night. I played a little bit. Not. I wouldn't call it an official play. My wife was there. It was like. Oh, we're we're down a hundred dollars. We should walk away. I'm like, yeah, I've never lost a hundred dollars gambling before. Okay, well, you know, like it was, and yeah. then we won a little bit. That's lost when you got to do some real acting. Yeah, so, some of your best work. <laughs> the, and then I, I would grade that as like maybe a half unit loss between the couple times I played. But then after uh, after the Veasan show with Moonoff filling Wait, in, so you didn't actually did you no slot activity with the father in law. No, that's it, another story. Oh, okay. He got, he's a big slot guy. He too. loves he loves slots. Not a big football guy though. He loves dancing drums. <laughs> he he unfortunately got sick. He couldn't come out early on in the week. We hung out with him later on in the week. Uh, Sean, not kidding. Yeah, slot gambling podcast. <laughs> the slot. I have slot. some strategies that I feel like people just right, a, a just live call. stream of now now Moonoff. I think I saw in the chat earlier. I don't know if he's still in here, but Moonoff. Was my wingman after the show ended? It was like, hey, what are we gonna do? I'm like, well, moon off. I gotta play the slot machine. Well, you can you come watch. Was me. there any shirtless volleyball before the <laughs> slot machine? <laughs> no, like a true no, wingman would no, do. No, no oh, Top okay. Gun type activity. Uh, it was just moon off and I, and then yeah, I mean, uh, put in put in 400 bucks, got it up to 800, <laughs> left with like six. So it was a uh, nice little run there on the slot machine. Counting down the days till Friday where I can play the slot machine once again. If Sean from 15 years ago heard Sean from today say, "Hey, I tried. I'm going to go throw $400 in a slot machine," you would have kicked yourself in the nuts. But I'm telling you, the <laughs> Eagles highlights, they have a highlight of Boston Scott scoring a touchdown. They have Not it, against the Giants, by the way. No, against the 49ers. <laughs> and uh, it's just electric. I, my wife played like the mask slot machine, and I had a brief moment where I go, "Hey, I'm getting into this. Am I a slot guy?" and then it became very stupid. It was like about the dog Jumping up to get the keys in the movie The Mask. I'm like, oh, this you is got pretty this into is it. Stupid. No, not at all. You're a slot. Cr- oh, I'm not a slot. C- well, well, hold on, Sean. I figured out. I'm New not a character. slot guy. As well. You're a slot critic. <laughs> the slot. How's the slot? That would actually be a funny Twitter uh, feed. X feed. Just people. That, someone that goes around and rates the slot machine only yes. based on how much they win or lose from the machine. And and Moonoff <laughs> was there. And Moonoff I had is like the you know like in beer pong where you have someone yeah. throw for you. Anytime I would get to the jackpot. Where you have to pick three uh, Super Bowl rings to get like the million dollars, I would have Moonoff step in, aka the guy to yeah, take the blame yeah. when we end up with the mini jack. <laughs> little, little did it, Moonoff know. Sean just no, needs someone to point the finger. Moonoff, Moonoff, <laughs> Moonoff. I think on two separate occasions did have two of the grand. Uh, aka the million. That's awkward, so you would just need one more. Because if you hit you hit the jackpot, then what? I was I was doing the math in my head. I would tip. It was at like one point one four million. Yeah, I, I would tip Moon off fifty grand at least. Wow. Okay. So, so not even a taco vendor. 
Well, I mean, uh, percentage wise, you could look at it and go, oh, you should give him 20%, but that's insane. I would say some say he did all the work. Maybe if, half if I was, if I was walking with over a million moon offs, getting 50 K that was, that was the math I was doing. But I mean, um, yeah. If you were only giving me 50 K and I just wanted for, there might be an altercation on the floor of the circuit. <laughs> No, I'm sitting there. It's my money. I'm letting you. Th- I'm letting you press the button. Uh, it was, you get a it nice was unclear in the contract. We we need to get this. Uh, in pe- uh, get out of here, Ryan. <laughs> hey, you know where else you can win big? Bet three sixty five. Love bet three sixty five. Um, I, I mean the oh, oh I, the the Tyler Higby prices were super juicy over there. Hopefully you took your uh, free bets that you can get over on bet three sixty five and got down on uh, Tyler Higby two touchdowns. Plenty of ways to spend your bonus bets. You can get a thousand dollar no sweat bet. Yes, sir. Like that. Yes, sir. We get down on some Monday night action. We're going to be giving out our favorite Monday night props, including Monday night football first touchdown bets. There are great prices over on Bet three sixty five. So sign up today. Use the sign up link in our bio. Scan the QR code if you're watching over on YouTube. Or head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash bet365. That's right. You get a thousand dollar no sweat bet or uh bet five dollars, get one hundred and fifty in bonus bets. Just head to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash bet three sixty five. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash bet three sixty five. Problem gambling, call one eight hundred gambler. You know what I don't have a problem with? Not a problem is little C's. Love me some little C's. A football Sunday, a football Thursday, a football Monday, whatever day of the week, Little C's has you covered as they are the official pizza sponsor of the National Football League. Imagine your team down 10 points at halftime, and then you make the call to get some Little Caesars delivery, AKA a pepperoni pizza. Well, of course, on the pretzel crust. And imagine those sweet, savory pieces of pepperoni piled high, paired perfectly with that pretzel crust and that little, little, little chunks of salt there on the golden eat brown pretzel crust. Imagine those pairing together as your Philadelphia Eagles come back from behind and win outright and cover the spread if you got it at minus two and a half. That is an NFL Sunday. And uh, that was courtesy of little C's. Get yourself some little C's, little C's wings, the uh, cookie dough, brownie bites, even how the toss in a toss in a little, uh, two liter of Pepsi. Uh, that is delicious delivery or our in-store pizza portal pickup. Grab some friends, enjoy a few slices during the game. Little Caesars pizza, pizza felt like great, uh, great little C's rate. Uh, there was, was a lot. Of, my Jalen Hurts there. Right? I'd say there was a lot of chat interaction uh, during the reads. That was I, I don't know if you saw this while uh, while you're doing the bet 365 read, but uh, C Donkey 28 saying just signed up in Louisiana, <laughs> one dollar got him three six hundred five three six hundred thirty six. I can't talk. Three hundred sixty three hundred sixty five. I was trying to say three six five dollars. Oh, nice. Yeah, and and uh, what but I, I said uh, three. I messed it up. The 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 promo I was reading was generic. So check check out your state, and of course, um, in Canada you can sign up as well. I I don't know what the deal is with bonus bets up there, but um, you know you support in Canada. Always appreciate that, and always appreciate our good friends up north. And if you had taken that three hundred sixty five dollars and put it on mm, Tyler Higby two touchdowns, you'd have oh. you'd have eleven thousand dollars. Oh <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Giving people a free sign up code and telling them what to do with a bonus bet and them not having eleven thousand dollars walking around their pockets. I I'm Brian, we can only do so much for these people. Yeah, yeah. And I I, I, me- I meant to add this during your tales from the slot, but I did have a moment. Um Friday night, uh, out in the desert. It was beautiful, mm. had a nice raging fire going. It was it was not windy uh, like it normally is. Uh, was well deep into the medicinal stuff. Uh, wife too. It was a rare occasion. Ooh, it's doing some camping uh, edibles, and uh, not for me, for her. And I, I kind of, I looked. I, I had this moment where I looked over at her. I'm like, you know, it's getting close to that time where Sean would be standing near the slot machine, <laughs> getting ready to play. The slot. How is the slot? Well, because she knows that, ge- like, generally the the game is like uh, she understands that the alarm goes off at one a.m. that says go to bed. Yeah, and so there, there's usually a how <laughs> how's the how's Sean doing at the slot? It seems like he might have a problem. Uh, it's not a problem when you, you're up. I'm I, dominating the slot. Also, do you ever play slots? I can't remember you ever gambling at slot machines. No, is this no, new? No, and, and coming back to the slot machine, so. This particular NFL machine, there's like three different screens or four, and I've dabbled in the other ones, just kind of like a heat check type thing. 
and I've been putting in my rewards card, um, which I normally didn't do. Oh, you're in on that now. Interesting. So, yeah, a little backstory. <laughs> I finally realized I've been using my circuit rewards card, never thought to actually cash in any of the stuff. And we went out to dinner at Barry's and I had a hundred uh hundred and five dollars over on the circa reward system. So shout out to you. <laughs> and that doesn't even include all my slot dollars because the particular machine I have, when I put my uh card into that one, it it's not working. So now I could ask someone to be like, hey, no, every yeah. other slot machine the rewards works. So I, you don't want to put it back on the grid. No, I, the, the last thing I want is someone, one of these guys working at circuit to uh, come over there and pry the thing open and start touching the buttons and mixing with the wires. It, yeah, I, w- I wouldn't mess with it either. No, I, I wouldn't go down that path. Although I would say this is a, a true so- Sophie's choice for you though, because you love rewards points. So I do. I was really going back and forth. <laughs> giving up and the rewards. And so I was points. going. Uh, all right, I guess I'll. I'll start putting my card in here. Ryan tried to put his card in once while I was playing, and I was on a heater. I ripped it out and like, said, threw it away. That shit out of here. <laughs> this man's on a legit heater. You do not touch the button. Hey Sean, you want to go play some blackjack? No, I'm gonna hit the slots. No, like I said, I almost <laughs> I almost pissed myself. That's how locked in. No, oh, my right. pleasure centers were hijacked. So hijacked. I mean, the uh, yeah. Who knew that uh, Dr. Phil was warning you? He really was. Lies. They're like uh, the slot <laughs> machines. They reward you, and then they. Uh, but they, it's a negative thing uh, overall. It's like, what are you talking about? I'm hammering free drinks and I'm cashing. And I don't even uh, just to, to put a bow on. It, I don't think we we spoke about this on the podcast, but we. We spoke about the slot with Derek on yes. at least one occasion. The slot, how's the slot? Which then brought the story to um, them getting excited about hand pays, <laughs> yes. which is like uh, you know getting paid a jackpot at one of those uh, slot machines. Which then led to Sean talking about um, playing slots in the airport. Yeah, they said that was a which then movie. led to Derek looking at him like a father, <laughs> being like, "Don't do no, that. those machines are tight. Don't do <laughs> Don't that. Don't do that." So yeah, shout out to the circa. Try their slots. Ah. All right, Jacksonville Jaguars twenty four, Houston well, Texans. Well, hold 21. on, Sean. I, I know. Do we uh, want to talk about yeah, the because, Thanksgiving? They're because we have old. some, we have some callers. I, it's oh, old, okay. but we got some callers. So, um, and I'll and I'll bring on uh, Easy, who's here. I'm sure to talk about his Lions. But you want to quit twenty nine, twenty two. Most shocking thing I saw when I popped the old score app open. Um, Honestly, I didn't even uh, didn't even consider this in the range of outcomes. The Packers. It looks like by the box score, they came out and uh, had a huge lead. Jordan Love was balling. So uh, yeah, I know we spoke to you on the pregame show, Easy, but uh, have you have you recovered now um, with with a with, with a day of football under your belt? Yeah, Zay Flowers helped me recover a little bit. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, we haven't even gotten that the Sunday night game. It seemed like it was one of those things where. All right, they need four or five yards, but if they get the first down, well, even before that, it was yeah. like they're up three. Do we want them to score the touchdown and go up ten and make it an easier back no. door? We want them to kick the field goal. They get they that kick perfect. The field goal. They waste a bunch of clock. They get in the field goal range, and Tucker shanks it like a true. I mean, his haircut <laughs> makes him look like a true asshole when he misses kicks. Yeah, he looks like he's in the. But yeah, you know, then, he's like one. Uh, you know, one of those loyal Germans. He looks. Like, he he kind of has a Nazi ish <laughs> haircut. I know I'm not no, like I'm neo Nazi. Like. Yeah, I'm assuming he's he doesn't have those political views, but his haircut uh, would lead you to believe otherwise. Now he he shanks a 44 yard field goal. And you go, All right, we're not covering the three and a half, or we're not winning the three. Even we're going to push that. So then, uh, Chargers uh, Chargers turn it over on downs, <laughs> but they turn it over on downs with an intentional grounding. So they get it back at the 42, and it's like this weird range where you're like, all right. Uh, you want them to get a couple of yards, make the field goal easier, third and four. And uh they Zay Flowers is a running and then oh he busts it through. Oh no, don't don't sit down, don't sit down. He ran it in for a touchdown. Amazing. Shout out to Zay Flowers. Amazing. And then the back door is right back open. So and then Chargers nowhere close. But yeah, happy Zay Flowers uh fixed your your horrible turkey day weekend. Yes, great win for Zay Flowers and the and the yeah. Ravens back. I had I had Zay Flowers first touchdown, last touchdown, and two touchdowns. Oh my god! Oh my You're a hero. God. That's the wheel. You. Oh my god. Yeah, he, he hooked me up. It, it saved my horrendous fucking early slate, though. I, like, there's not a locker b- big enough to put everyone <laughs> in from the one o'clock games. What was your biggest uh, issue? Um, the Steelers' offensive coordinator. Oh, Probably. come on. Steelers won. What did you, what was your problem? <laughs> they, they kept giving it to Najee. Oh yeah. 
Well, see, they're and they're weird. I mean, I, I was on. I had Jalen Warren in DFS, but like, it's always going to be like that with the Steelers because because Naj as good as Jalen Warren has played and like has stolen the starting job from Najee Harris is actually running pretty well and and uh, their offense. I mean, they had 400 yards of offense. They really should have had more than 16 points, but um, yeah. Yeah. They actually played an offensive scheme that helped Najee too, which Canada for whatever reason refused to do. So that helped him a lot too. But uh, you can stick uh, Adam Thielen in that locker. Oh Oh my God. Finally, there's a game where Adam Thielen isn't, I mean, it was just an ATM, right? Like just the Adam Thielen uh, stuff was just bonkers. I, I mean, it eventually had to end. I assume it's going to be back, but yeah, I don't. <laughs> Carolina so bad, couldn't even get well, the Adam Thielen c- catches going. From what I saw in that one, which was kind of like you know, I had all six games on, so I had to go back and forth. But it seemed like they were double te- teaming Thielen pretty much every single play. Good strategy. Well, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and and I would say again, just casually watching that game. Um, without digging up the numbers, I, it felt like he did have some looks, um, but he just like Bryce young was particularly off. Um, I saw someone comp the, like the CJ Stroud, Bryce young decision is looking as bad as the Justin Jefferson, Jalen Rager one. And it's, it's not even like satire. No, I I tweeted it out. And I I mean, it's easy to kill this guy. So why not do it? But uh, Ryan, has there been a moment where you've saw you've seen something Bryce Young did and you're like, yeah, that's why they drafted him. He's made a couple throws. He's made a couple throws. I've I guess seen Tommy I, DeVito make a couple throws. I guess throws a too, couple though. throws, but not like there hasn't been like a drive hey, even here's where the, here's what I would say the thing that stands out as being scary. When he when he rolls out to get outside the pocket, he has no athleticism. Yes. Zero athleticism, period. So yeah, I don't know. Tough. T- if tough, you give, uh, it, tough it, give it a couple of years, and Bryce Young will be working at Best Buy with Trey Lance. <laughs> well, Trey Lance might still be in the league. How is Trey Lance still in the league? Yeah, I mean, give give Kaepernick a chance. You're letting Bryce Young play quarterback, <laughs> and Kaepernick's out there available on the street. He does. And Kaepernick always chimes in. I am available. <laughs> All right, thanks, thanks. Uh, Cam Newton. Thanks, too. Colin. Cam Newton's letting everyone know he's available. <laughs> Uh, Adam Thielen did have uh, how many? Tar- he had three targets. So yeah, I, I don't know what it was. With their offense, uh, Mingo got <laughs> had six targets for some yeah, reason. Yeah, he looked all right. I don't know. All right, well, all thanks, right, easy. easy. Uh, real quick, uh, looking ahead, Detroit is laying three and a half points on the road. What are you doing? I think this is a good comeback game for us. It's not on Thanksgiving, so that'll help. You know, we've looked terrible two weeks in a row. As long as we start fixing the turnover problem and we cover the receivers downfield on defense, we'll be good. Those are our two issues. And they seem fairly easy to fix, so I think down the road we'll end up playing a lot better. Yeah, and they got the Saints next week, who look pretty banged up. So maybe a good matchup. Their their receiving core in particular looks pretty. Uh, NFC South up. is interesting. I mean, Alave's had the, he's had some bad concussions. He's definitely not going to be back. So maybe an, an easy matchup for Detroit's defense to get right. All right, easy. Yeah, appreciate y'all. Let it ride. Wow. All right, Ryan, before we get into uh, Jags, Texans, of course, shout out to underdog fantasy, head over there, use the hundred percent deposit bonus up to $100. We gave out a underdog pick them uh, today. That would have paid 25 to one pretty close. Ryan, pretty close. Didn't quite get there, but uh, the underdog pick are so fun. Uh, we give out plenty of fantasy pick on the show. We got some fantasy pick You can play uh, later on Monday night football, get in, you know, you go three for three, nice little plus six hundred. And if you use our code promo code SGPN, hundred percent deposit bonus up to one hundred dollars. Underdogfantasy.com promo code SGPN. Jags at well, Texas. Hold on, we oh, got more uh, calls. Yeah, well, we got another Thanksgiving related. Caller. Okay, we got to give cereal a little. The man with no. many names. I'm sure he's gonna maybe throw a little shade at you, but mostly just point out how honestly the big takeaway: Cowboys. Close your eyes. Special. Killer. They beat it. Killer. How's it, how are you feeling, Cyril? What's up, fellas, man? Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. It was wonderful. Glad oh. you asked. <laughs> I would imagine that game was just stress. I mean, Sean says it, it can't, a couple fourth down calls go a different way. Maybe the game's different, but it seems like it was a cruise, another cruise control vi- a division win for the, the Cowgirls. Oh, come on. You were doing so good until that end. I had to. Come on. 
Ah, uh, all right. Well, I do want to say for all you schmucks out there that don't know ball, I don't want to hear about who we face because we're destroying everybody by twenty plus points. Yeah, except good teams. I agree. No, I, was, I, I, I'm not, except good teams. I'm with We've cereal. only played two good teams, and they were both on the road. <laughs> I'm with cereal. But I, I get off get off my lawn about schedule bullshit. That you is play, a disgusting. You act. play the teams that are on oh, your okay. schedule. All right, that's a fact, and no one else is beating them by twenty plus every game. So you lost losing to the Cardinals by twelve. They were they were what what happened there? I said win. When we win, we oh, okay. win by twenty. <laughs> All right. Oh, look at Sean getting uh, Sean. You're gonna get a fender bender looking in the rear view. No, I'm just I I, I didn't realize you were such a Cowboys apologist. Sean, there, just Kurt. let it happen. He, they're happy. It's the regular season. They're winning they are, games. This is this is great for the late season. Uh, this is the Cowboys year. Uh, before things go horrifically wrong. I really hope the Cowboys Eagles play in the playoffs. Keep that energy up in two weeks, dog. Yeah, okay. I like. I'll this. be coming for your neck. What's man. what's what's the bet? We need to get what what's the wager? Signed bottle of alcohol? Is that oh, what we're that's doing? Fun. I mean, I don't drink, but oh, all right. Well, maybe maybe we'll. You know, maybe you got some uh, nice cereal I can fill my. Oh bowl no, with. I need. We need a Jersey. Bet, you like maybe. you like pretzel crust pizza cereal? <laughs> I might get that chicken parm pretzel crust for non oh, Tommy yes. Tito. <laughs> hey, Tommy. Tommy. Hey, how's that chicken parm going, Tommy? Dude, it, here's the best part. Everyone loves a chicken parm sandwich. Everyone oh. loves a good chicken cutlet. Yep. Everyone loves uh, some good Italian food. They're so quick to make fun of it, but mm, can't wait. Every, you know what's funny? Is play like there's places all over New Jersey legitimately updating their menu to call their chicken parm sandwich the Tommy DeVito. Oh, and if you missed it, uh, it's on, not chicken parm. I think it's like a chicken cutlet with some sort of special toppings. If you missed it, we did uh, debut a new nickname for Tommy DeVito, Dago Dimes. So feel free <laughs> to use that one. We're going to be working on the T-shirts. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, cereal. Any uh, any any uh, picks you like for Monday night? Any props? What do, what are we talking here? Um, I haven't even really begun to look at it. Well, here, here I'll, I'll pivot for you. I hit you. a full spread on the ladder. Oh, the Dells game took it from day eleven up to twenty four. That was pretty dope. And I'm coming on. What do we got? Back to back shippers. We got uh, the land shippers and we got the sea shippers. I was going to say up. Thursday night, not a short week because you're on Thanksgiving. Uh, I think what's the number? Seven and a half. Take it. Yeah. Probably yeah. all the way up yeah. to like fifteen. Take the points. Got it. I will say, <laughs> I, I, Gino against that defense is going to be an uh, absolutely. If you bet on Gino uh, against the Cowboys, you are just getting on the roller coaster. Are we get another Duran Bland pick six? That guy's amazing. I how is this? Isn't he? It's a, it. I mean, it, obviously, some of that is just like a happenstance, but it makes me think that Diggs isn't that good. It's just a system play. But no, got, Diggs is pretty good. That one cornerback oh, spot yeah. just gets all the pick sixes. Yep. It's a system play. Yeah, I like basically that. like, like Terrell defense in the Shanahan or <laughs> Terrell Davis in the Shanahan offense. Like anyone can do it. Uh, all right, thanks, Cereal. Let it ride. <laughs> all right, man. Cheers, man. Worst Talk luck to your Cowboys. Uh, Texans versus the Jags. Uh, I think Boston Capper said he was calling in. Right? Oh yeah, so, well, well, we can bring him on when we talk. Giants, okay, Pats. Uh, Jags, Texans. Uh, Jags got the win. Cover twenty four twenty one. Real back and forth game, good game, uh, and it came down to what fifty eight yard field goal hit the bottom of the crossbar. C.J. Stroud to me looks really good. Um, you know, can't lose this game. Jags are still a team that only yeah. beats teams that aren't like they're the Jags are very much a gatekeeper team, and this says a lot. It also destroyed a flow chart. This is now that's two in a row for the Jags uh, on the road in Houston. Yeah, so maybe I mean, a Houston new flow still, chart. Houston is still does well historically against Jacksonville, but yeah, I mean uh, Texans in general, they're a little young. Uh, I'm not shocked they lost this game. I mean, when they got that stop right before halftime, uh, I thought it was going to be their game, but ultimately couldn't pull it off. They got Denver next week, uh, but Woo. and the Jags, I, I know they won, and this is a tough spot to go in and knock CJ Stroud off. But I don't know, man. Are you are you impressed at all with what you see out of CJ Stroud? You mean Trevor Lawrence? Yes. Yeah. No. I, uh, impressed by C.J. Stroud. Think they're definitely on the right track. Losing this game makes me think they're they're you know maybe a fr- they're not going to win the division. 
And it makes me think that Trevor Lawrence is probably going to win the division, and we're probably going to get an oh, opportunity. You know, be better against him. They're hosting a home in a game in the game. playoffs again. Like, what's going to yeah. be the Chargers somehow? <laughs> I was going to say, what's the? It, I it could be like the Bills, dude. Do the Chargers fire Brandon Staley after that game? The owner's so cheap. I know. Yeah, That's I, why I keep coming back to you. Had he looked like a little kid too. Just get do something. You got to change something. Tampa Bay Bucks twenty, Indianapolis Colts twenty seven. Man, if you uh, again, uh, bad beat. If you listen to the Veasan show, I gave out <laughs> uh, Baker Mayfield first touchdown. The Bucks start the game off great. <laughs> they driving down. Uh, Mike Evans gets tackled at the one yard line. The Colts are off sides. They get it to the half yard line. QB sneak with Baker Mayfield push it in. <laughs> Somehow he gets injured on the QB sneak. <laughs> They don't get the touchdown. They have to end up settling for a field goal eventually. That was kind of a red flag. Uh, these are uh, these are very much the same teams in my mind. Kind of like a, a washed up quarterback. You don't think that much of, but they have some moments. Uh, shout out to Indy for getting the win, twenty seven twenty. I thought Tampa would be able to pull it out. They were certainly driving there at the end of the game. Baker fumbled. I mean, yeah, that's Baker Mayfield. What are you gonna do? The Baker Mayfield experience continues. I mean, Mike Evans continues to dominate for a fantasy team. Best ball stuff. Not exactly sure why the Colts won this game. Uh, no. al also, the win total. They just kind of survived. My win total. So under on Carolina, looking awesome. Under on um, the Colts. Because I wanted to fade Anthony Richardson, looking horrible, but it's because they're somehow winning games with Gardner Mitchell. <laughs> I know it's who, crazy. by the way, is laying points on the road next week. Well, and in a divisional game, this was the first time Gardner Mitchell has ever won three games in a row. So, I, I, uh, Shane Sykin, Coach of the Year, I was oh. on it. I mean, you, if they the, get in the playoffs, him or D'Amico Ryan, so it's tough. It's tough. well, and are both of them going to make the playoffs? Right now, uh, I believe AFC playoff picture is bonkers. So you have the wild card picture is you have Steelers and Browns both at seven and four. Although it does feel like the Browns are going to start trending in the wrong direction at some point. Then you have the Broncos, Colts, Texans at six and five, Bills at six and six. So Bills are out. Uh, one of the Broncos, Colts, and Texans are in the playoffs though today, based on whatever the tiebreaker is. And uh, I think it might Colts be are currently in. Colts are the team that's in yes. right now. Then Texans, Broncos, Bills, Bengals, Raiders, and then it's the four and seven teams. But uh, the 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 bottom half of the AFC playoff picture is going to be bonkers. So yeah, Broncos, Colts, Texans. You have to pick one of those teams to make the playoffs. Although I have a feeling if the Browns, I mean, two of those teams could make the playoffs. The Broncos could make the fucking playoffs. That would be pretty wild. We might we might have to reevaluate our uh, rush. Steelers could get the number one seed, Ryan. Uh, that you want to talk about wild? That is wild. They're seven Stop. and four. They're not getting the. <laughs> they're not. Maybe they're uh, gonna. They're gonna win. They're laying a big number. Next, next up, New England Patriots. They were three and a half point road favorites in the Meadowlands. Uh, of course, the Golf Gambling Podcast hosted a very entertaining live stream with Boston Capper and Steve Shermer. Which, by the way, during that live stream, uh, Capper did point out to you through me that uh, the Eagles were at two and a half. So if you yes. listen, if you're listening, you could have gotten a winner on the, Eagles. it doesn't matter uh, the teams it just bet good numbers. Yeah. I don't, I don't bet teams. I bet numbers. In Great. fact, Sean, I didn't want to tell this and brag, but I actually had Eagles minus two and a half and bills <laughs> plus three and a half. So. Oh, wow. Great uh, value. <laughs> Play I'm both sides. Very sharp. <laughs> Uh, joining us on the line, Boston Capper. Are you there, Capper? Oh, Cap. Cap I mean, the idea that Capper is going to be able to figure out this kind of technology. He was there. He's gone. Uh, Sean, this the Giants were not particularly good today, but the Patriots were worse. And I and I don't and I'm 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 excited to hear Capper's take on it. But the laundry list of things why they're worse. The the playing for the tie at the end of the game, uh, just. <laughs> For whatever reason, not running the ball when the Giants didn't have Dexter Lawrence, uh, playing Mac Jones for entirely too long. It, it it's does, a baby fucking wheel, if, uh, man. If Bill Belichick truly is the best coach that ever lived, he's clearly tanking. Like this is intentional. Can't not be. How are we feeling, Capper? Capper, are you there? I forgot. I took my fucking thing off the mic. He's not. He's not tanking. Like he's not. It's no. just his talent. He's the just, talent is not there. He's like grandpa, a little senile. It's just he's, yeah, like like yeah. like he drafts these guys out of like 
where did Duggar come from? Like Senor Rhyme or something like that? Like fucking from some Division two school? Well, you've heard, like, you know the knows. story. He goes to watch lacrosse games, and then he he, he yeah. scouts some uh, some D two football. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, you guys, you got the loss. That's what you wanted. Better pick. Yes, exactly. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted. But uh, listen, uh, the besmirch Bill is like, listen, the game just kind of passed them by. You know what I mean? Like, listen. We all have grandfathers who fought in World War II, right? They were good at the shooting uh, out of the back of the B-52s. Well, guess what? Now there's fighter jets, and they can't keep up. So that's kind of what wow. Bill is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you just called Bill Belichick a machine gun <laughs> hanging off the back of a bomber <laughs> as compared to a modern uh, stealth jet <laughs> aircraft. <laughs> It is, a, it is a great vi- a visual. <laughs> Maybe Jake can get a Photoshop of Bill Belichick uh, storming the beaches of Normandy. <laughs> just give me like what, what's that bus with the, the face? Tech, it, just have a beat with a bomber with a face that's Bill Belichick. <laughs> so you now, guys remember Memphis Bell Band? That was a fucking great movie. All you youngers who don't know, I'm sure at least at least one of you guys have seen Memphis Bell, right? No. No, we're what? yeah, we're we're the same age though, so just don't have. Yeah, I know, so I'm that's what I'm saying. So like, I'm not, you I'm not see Memphis Bell. Memphis Bell's a great fucking movie. Okay. Capper, I I know Kramer pretends like, hey, I'm rooting for the draft pick. What do you mean? Well, I I know there's it, there's been a movement so far of Giants fans retiring as being Giants fans. There's a there's a oh, legit thing so gross. on so social gross. media of Giants fans hanging up their Giants fandom because. Uh, they won the game. Uh, what? How was your take? Were you going to retire as a Patriots fan if you won the game? No, I always do for the laundry, man. I don't give a fuck who's in it, man. It's laundry, is laundry. That's it. That's how it works. <laughs> I, I did. I will say, I found it very interesting. Um, but it's not that surprising because we live in a generation where people take to social media to explain all of the things they failed at because that's their process. And so to see these these giant beta pussies taking to the internet to like anyone gives a shit if you're gonna root for the t- you're a fucking social media guy who like you're not you're not a, you don't follow the team you don't cover the team you do nothing for the team you just you just talk about the team and for some reason you're a more important fan than everyone else and you think everyone gives a shit that you're gonna quit being a fan. However, today is the day I say enough is enough for me the past decade or so. You've brought me nothing but pain, misery, and suffering. I finally thought we had a chance to turn it around and draft a franchise quarterback, but y'all can't even tank properly. I'm fucking done. I'm done wasting my time, my money, and energy on this sorry ass team. Effective immediately. I'm no longer a fan of the Giants until John Mara sells the team and or we become a serious franchise. Imagine I'm thinking a billionaire gives a fuck what you think. Here's my official statement on this. No, 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 that. Can you imagine what our father? would think if oh. you went to your father and was like, listen, he, what you just read, Sean, is the most offensive thing I've ever heard in my entire <laughs> life. It is gross. Like it is fucking disgusting. Can you imagine going to your father with that? You know what like, it is? You would get your ass whooped. Like, listen, I got the belt. I don't know if you guys got the belt, but listen, you would get the belt for saying something like that. Forget about it. Uh, so, my official statement is very simple. I think this is a combination of two things. Everyone playing their fucking dynasty leagues and constantly trading away players that are good now for third round picks in the future and the NBA. Like what, 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 what sport have you followed where a team has ever intent? There's definitely been some times where teams have intentionally lost, but let's look at lovey Smith and the Houston Texans. They fuck up the tank. They win that last game and they take CJ Stroud. And they hey, take CJ. Hey, Sa- forget about no, f- it. Fuck momentum. Hey, Pazzo. No, I, I disagree with the hey, momentum. Hey, argument. What are you talking about? Walking here. Oh, you, you, you fucking. No, I you, mean, you d- pale d- faced d- potato sorry. eating. I was doing the Dago, D- Dago DeVito. He's a, he's Dago a good DeVito. guy. That is the best shirt in the entire world. That thing is going to sell like fucking hotcakes. You seriously, <laughs> Dago fucking DeVito? Forget about it. If you if you can get the copyright for Pesci's face on that shit, oh. Yeah. oh. Oh my God! Forget about it. It's like a jersey, and on the back it just says "forget about it." <laughs> but, but you spell it like real, like real ridiculous. Like maybe you even get like an A U G H. I know what's happening. There. I was at the wedding. Everybody was named Peter and Paul and Tony. I have no idea. But there was cash in the envelope. I have no idea. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> Henry. So Giants get the win, ten to seven. They uh, electric c- cover the spread, win outright as exactly. money line dogs. Dogs. 
I mean, Ryan, there's some points where you were, I, I think you said it on the stream that uh, the person this looks worse for is Danny dimes. Are we worried that Dago dimes is, is a better version? So good. So uh, good. Are we worried about that, Ryan? Uh, well, I mean, I, I would certainly be worried that a undrafted free agent who's had very little time in the offense is uh, operating the offense better than Daniel Jones was. Now, that mm. being said, I would say I, I'm actually reflecting this more on a positive of the coaching. Oh, okay. To to be to, to get to a place where you have this. What are, what are you pouring a drink, Capper? Uh, <laughs> Capper, are you like <laughs> unclogging your drain? What's going on in there? It's going inside, man. Look. Oh, okay. It's well. It's like you're you're. There's like a screen door, and you're I'll just jiggling a drink with ice. No. Uh, yeah, no. I, I think I think it 100. It 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 looks bad for Daniel Jones that both Tyrod and Danny DeVito have had positive yes. moments in the office. He called him Danny. He didn't even call him his real name. He uh, called him Danny DeVito. But I, I and I also think that Tommy. I think the idea that um, Tommy DeVito is an absolute legend who might have just ended his career undefeated as a New York Giants starting quarterback because Tyrod might be back after the bye. Dude, you can't stat Tyrod after the. I agree. Guinea, I, the guinea, the guinea prince from New Jersey. Fucking statting well, the fucking New York Giants. Forget about and it. And I think like like <laughs> the fun. The funniest thing is, so yeah, I uh, got hit up with some ra so a, a couple different things from inside the stadium. But I mean, they're they're playing the Sopranos theme to him coming out. They're they're like going to his his family tailgating in the in the in the, in the parking lot before the game. They they're leaning all in on this. And so from yeah, why why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you play him and just have Tyrod be the back? I mean, yeah, who gives a shit? But. I mean, Listen, sir. I wish I had a guy like Tommy DeVito on the Patriots. I wish I did. It'd be, his name would be like Sully, and he'd be an alcoholic Irish asshole. <laughs> Jay Sweet Potato endorsement deal. Yeah. yeah I exactly. mean, you guys just needed to get JT O'Sullivan was when he was in the. All right, Capper. Yeah. Before we uh, let you go, who is the starting quarterback for the New England Patriots in 2024? Uh, so I'll, I'll 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 play the Ryan's bit, the the McCarthy kid. <laughs> JJ McCarthy. McCarthy. JJ McCarthy. JJ no. McCarthy. Let's go. So this really? is what they're gonna do. Is they're that gonna, who you want? They're who gonna do take you want? Marvin. No, I don't. No, that's not who I want. I want to. I want to take. I want to take the Harrison kid to piss off all the Colts fans. So the Patriots have Marvin Harrison's kid. By the way, Marvin Harrison's like a stone cold killer from Philadelphia. By the way. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take that out of the podcast form. And uh, anyway, other than that, I want to piss off all the Colts fans and get Harrison then. I don't know. Get some other fucking quarterback. Who cares? Like, it's, it's such a crapshoot with quarterbacks. Who cares? Yeah. I don't want Caleb, Caleb Williams. I uh, I will say. Arms. Can, convulsing. Can, convulsing. Can, convulsing. It wasn't crying. It was convulsing. Oh, don't say that around arms. Kramer. He is a huge. He loves crying. Loves that emotion. I'm sure there's listen, like a. I'm fine. Listen, listen. I'm fine with crying, dude. I've been in therapy. It's okay. <laughs> Like, but convulsing in your mother's arms after that, that's yeah. different. You, that's, convulsing is for like grief, grief, not losing a fucking football game. Like, well, fucking and suck it up kid. Do they, do they have a, uh, a nail place at uh, Foxborough stadium? Cause I mean, it would be great for that Caleb Whale. He could get his nails done right before the game. Well, looking well, fresh. Listen, Bob, Bob, Bob likes a good uh, nail and uh, <laughs> massage place, if you know what I'm saying. So I'm sure there's one right there in Fox. You have to know when to come. Yeah, I was going to say, Robert Kraft probably has one in his <laughs> office. I got a gal for you. Uh, yeah, you got to have a cover, you know? You can't. You Might can't, be the same gal. <laughs> you can't call it a massage parlor. All right. Thank you, Capper. Subscribe Bye, to the boys. Golf Gambling Podcast. <laughs> uh, I mean, you got to admit, uh, Sean, to Tommy DeVito. Pretty, uh, pretty epic performance. Dago Dimes winning ball games. Oh, he's damn right. He's he is. he's gluing that team back together. Even though Jay Glazer's trying to break it apart, <laughs> little fucking oopa loopa. Ryan versus uh, national and beat reporters is always my favorite rivalry. Uh, Ryan, so you're saying there is no drama between Wink Martindale and. Brian oh, Gable. I have no idea. Oh. I just think the the dramatic in nature in which Jay Glazer tried to report it. Was very very theatrical. I mean, look, they they this is Fox we're talking about. They have an MMA trainer doing their NFL insider work. They got a comedian doing their ref, uh, their their uh, expert analysis. The Everyone's catching them. The, I, I I just think uh, you know you you drew my attention to it. Uh, didn't think much of it. Then looked into it. Seemed a little fishy. And then after the game, seems like. Uh, Misinformation is being leaked to find mm. uh, the rats in the building. 
this is going to be funny when we find out um, Chris Mara has cha- has lost his uh, position with the Giants. That's my prediction. Oh wow, he's already been moved kind of to an offensive side, but he's the leak. Tennessee Titans anyway, no seventeen, Carolina Panthers ten. Wow. Easy uh, one. I mean, Will Levis, yeah, it was one of my locks. Should have made the Steelers my other lock, but uh, we'll get to that one in a second. Uh, I mean, Will Levis looked competent, uh, made a few decent throws. Derrick Henry got those two touchdowns, as you said on the pregame show. Got Ryan. that whole second half, three touchdown sweat. Didn't really ever get close, unfortunately. Uh, Panthers are really bad. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I get it. Titans weren't great. Not a great team, but. I mean, Panthers, Frank Reich, Bryce Young, blow it all up. It's seven, all bad. Seven point game. I mean, if you're the Panthers, what do you do? You don't have a first round pick. Your number one pick overall looks bad. He looks. I mean, you look at like Clayton Toon. You look at uh, w- even Will Levis. Like Will Levis looks n- way more like an NFL quarterback than Bryce Young. Way. You you probably it's not, and it's not even it's not particularly close. You're probably not far off. Uh, you can't. You can't swap the quarterback, so you probably fire the coach. Yeah, I mean, Reich's getting fired, bringing the new OC, but they're just they're in trouble, man. I, but also this this team. Do you want? The, I mean, I, I get it, it's an NFL job, but the owner seems like he's a real menace. Steelers sixteen, uh, Bengals ten. Also another ugly game. I mean, Cincinnati, Jake Browning. It, it was interesting. Jake Browning had some moments where you're like, all right, those are some good throws, and then he had a bunch of moments where like, holy shit, like tip balls that. I think there were like at least three uh, balls that either should have been interceptions or tips that should have maybe gotten intercepted or hit the ground that ended up turning into Bengals catches and and getting extra yards. It felt like Pittsburgh was pretty much in control of the game the entire time. Uh, since he hung around, but the Steelers ended up getting the win. They got over 400 yards first time in a long time for the Steelers. I do think the offense looked better, not Matt Canada. Um, Kenny Pickett still needs some work. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I like, I would say Browning looked good when the first read was there, and he didn't have someone breathing. He had, down his he throat. had a couple like back shoulder throws to, um, uh, who's that? I'm blanking on the receiver. What? Why can't I can't Jamar remember? Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase. Uh, he had a couple of those that looked pretty good. Uh, yeah, I mean, but like you mentioned, the if you if you look at the the game stats, it, it's I mean, what those two tip passes, like so, two of his four catches for eighty-one yards were passes that almost certainly should have been intercepted by the first person. If not, the ball got tipped in the air with at least three or four Steelers defenders around, and Jamar Chase came down with it. That being said, nineteen out of twenty-six, two twenty-seven, and a touchdown for Jake Browning. There are worse quarterbacks playing in the National. Oh, sure, Bryce Young. By a mile. Uh, that being said, bang, I mean the Bengals are are cooked. Unfortunately, Atlanta Falcons yeah. twenty four, New Orleans Saints fifteen. Ryan, you 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 jumped off the Falcons train, and now the Falcons are atop the NFC South. Desmond Ritter still looked really bad. Had a had a couple bad interceptions. One in the red zone. Saints just got destroyed injury wise <laughs> yeah. this game. I mean they're 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 now without their number one player at like four defensive positions. They're down to what? I mean, they, they even lost Rashid Shahid. Uh, yeah. So Michael Thomas out, Alave out. You know, what are they going to run? I mean, just just line up Taysom Hill at receiver, I guess. <laughs> he fumbled. In fairness, I did pick the Saints when they were going to be starting Jameis Winston. Yes. Derek Carr. It, Derek Carr is bad. He is. I don't bad. care how bad Jameis could be. His ceiling's high. Much more start, entertaining. Start playing him. Uh, Falcons are five and six. Saints five and six. Buccaneers four and seven. So the Bucks, even though they're four and seven, they're still hanging around for the NFC South. Uh, next up, Rams. Well, real quick, yes, I want to update people because if you did tail us on that um, crazy ass Tyler Algier to lead Ooh, the yeah, NFC South people. in rushing yards, he is. It, it, this is almost unbelievable. He's in third place right now. Bijan has, has is up about 150 uh, plus yards on him, and Rashad White about 100. He's in third place though. We're in week 12, Sean. We have a couple injuries. Let's 65 go. to fucking one. Oh my goodness. All right. Rams 37, Cardinals 14. Ryan, you locked up the Rams. This was easy money. Glad I got down on it as well. Blow We're chart. both on the Rams here. Safford looked pretty competent. Of course, Tyler Higby hits two touchdowns, Dog. 30 to one. 
I mean, Arizona's pretty bad. And we talked about it on the uh on the pregame show, the Vison show, Kaiser be White being out, like any sort of stuff that the Cardinals defense had going was gonna unravel. That happened. And, and Kyron Williams seems to matter to yeah, this offense. He was Jesus. huge. I'm pissed I didn't play him in DFS or any sort of props. I was kind of scared off because uh, McVay was like, "Hey, we got to keep it smart," and that kind of scared me off a little bit. But he ended up having a bonkers game, even on not a ton of carries. Was it two touchdown or nine touchdowns in seven games? It, he's he's scoring because he's scoring. Yeah. And if you look at the splits when he's at his best, this Rams team. I mean, Sean, the Rams are back very oh, much yeah. in terms of being a, a potential playoff. They're team. definitely a frisky uh, playoff team. And they're, they are, they're an interesting playoff team because they truly have nothing to lose. And if you imagine them going up against like the fourth place, like if, if they had to play the Falcons in Atlanta in a playoff game, are you, what, what is the spread right now? It's probably more likely to be the, like someone else because the Cowboys uh, will probably the Cowboys and or Eagles will probably be in that position. The the second team from the East, but yeah, I mean, e- even imagine Matt Stafford going oh, up yeah, against you're right, w- going up against the Detroit Lions, little revenge angle. Oh, I mean, that would be fun. Uh, wow. We might be we might be barreling down at that game, so stay tuned. Broncos twenty nine, Cleveland Browns twelve. I was on the old uh, Denver Broncos here. Nice, they're win. back. Cover for them. They're playing well. I mean, defense has gotten just so much better. That's really it's night and day. Uh, from the they team cut that like two him, high put price guys. Yeah, they, they got, got rid better. of a couple uh, vets that were dogging it, and Russell Wilson's running the ball. I think that is really what's making a difference. And they figured out enough between this running game, like a three-headed monster. Uh, it's it's frustrating for fantasy and props, but all these guys are. P. Ryan's their best guy, though. I think so. He looks. I mean, that's a guy. We we used to say this when he was backing up Joe Mixon. Just a real like grown ass man, beard under there, knows how to pass block. I mean, that's why Sean Payton brought him in. Trustworthy in the two minute, trustworthy in in the up. Yeah, I mean, he stuff. had seven uh, carries for fifty five yards. Compare that to Javante Williams, eighteen for sixty five. Like they should be giving Piran more work. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, think about Payton in New Orleans. New Orleans always yeah. had number of guys. Always had a two or three headed monster rotating guys in. They they look pretty good, man. And I forgot to mention with the Atlanta game, Cordero Patterson was looking electric out there. Got some really nice top guys. ten NFL player. Uh, probably more like top twenty five at this point. But Philadelphia Eagles thirty seven, Buffalo Bills thirty four. Bills Mafia, the line is open. Call in. They didn't cut. We we did. This is a loss on our sheet. On our sheet, we had a three and a half. I think it it dropped to three pretty quickly. So uh, officially, probably a push. Maybe even got that late two and a half and got the W. Jalen Hurts never in doubt. He has that dog in him. Uh, Lane Johnson being out normally affects uh, the team a lot, but team played really well. I mean, they've gotten off to slow starts in the first half, but really figured out in the second half. I mean, Jalen Hurts five touchdowns, three through the air, two on the ground. They're just a very, very good team, uh, and they just figure out ways to win. It it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if, uh, you know, linebacker gets hurt, Josh Allen running all over the place. You just know at the end of the day they're going to get that W. Uh, Josh Allen, I I called the Josh Allen interception in the group chat, Ryan. It was one of those days. Jake Elliott hits a fifty-nine yard field goal to send it to overtime. That felt like the there were two plays of the game for me. Jake Elliott kick, which is almost unbelievable to make a kick like that in those weather, in that weather. Yeah. Two, the Zacchaeus touchdown to me was the play that changed everything. That, that was a prayer. Tricks. That was the prayer that got answered, and then the game changed after that. Well, I don't think that was a prayer. I mean, if you watch it, uh, hurts. no, it's a good play. I'm just saying, like that's that's not a play that's converted. Like, all right, maybe it's a it's a one out of four shot to a, a number four receiver. Uh, just it, it's a good play. The he the, the the defender was slightly out of position, turned his head. Made the the receiver made the play. I'm just saying that's the that's the that was a game changing play more than a lot of the other stuff. That's that an had. MVP type play. And if you listen to Zacchaeus in the press conference, he said, "I was looking to Hurts and we made eye contact. He showed me where to go with his eyes. He put the ball up where only I could get it. I came up and made a play. So that is." Rare breed, untamed. Are you worried that the Eagles are peaking too early? Mm, 
No, because I think there's still a lot of stuff they can work on. Like uh, they had two turnovers uh, and kind of uh, sloppy at times. Like Jay, you know, Kelsey had some sloppy plays. Uh, Hertz had that um, fumble with Gainwell. I don't know who to blame. It was probably on Hertz. So I don't even. They're not even quite playing their cleanest games. Like yeah, they're. Uh, they're not dominating teams in the same way that they did last year, but their schedule is much tougher than last year. Like they're not playing some of these dog shit teams. They're getting the team's best shot every game and they're answering the bell. Like to go into Kansas City on Monday night on a short week with the holiday in there, to come back on Sunday in wet, wintry conditions against a Buffalo team that's desperate, a Buffalo team that needs to win to stay alive in the playoff chase, a, a Buffalo team that has Josh Allen. And to get that win at home, I think speaks volumes for the character of this team and this organization and of their leader, Jalen Hurts. Wow, prepared statement. Yeah, it, w- curious to see how they play in the in the coming weeks. Uh, they, defense was on the field uh, a lot. Last defense did feel a little three guess. of the last. Pretty interesting because the Eagles. You think about them dominating time of possession. They did that beginning of this season, all of last season. Last four games, they lost the time of possession battle in three of those games, and they won it against Dallas, but only by 18 seconds. So, gotta wonder if it's gonna be like a cumulative thing on the defense uh, over time. But yeah, for now, they're finding ways to win. Winners win. It's like for now, for for now, yeah. No, I I I do think that they've they 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 seem to be facing a bit of an attrition on the defensive side. Defense has been playing a lot of snaps. How many how many snaps they play today? I didn't look at the box score, but it had to have been like eighty plus. Yeah, they'll be all right. I'm just saying that shit adds up when you're playing games back to back to back. So, I, I, I don't know why. Like you, everything's binary. It's either an insult or it's glowing positivity yeah. about the Eagles. Exactly. I can't just speak facts. No, no, you're right. Their defense is playing a lot of snaps. They're figuring out how to w- ways to get wins. I mean, to go in and hold Kansas City to 17 points is pretty awesome. Oh yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, no. I like that. Like I said, they're finding ways to win, but I would imagine this should add. This will add up eventually. Well, that's why they got to get that bye week, and, uh, and it sucks that they have the Niners this week because it, it's almost going to be sucks sweet for out. the Niners. Well, I think the ni- the Niners are going to be a little bit healthier than the than the Eagles, and the Eagles might have an excuse, kind of no like excuses. the Niners did in the playoffs. No excuses. Oh, well, is Brock Purdy playing? How long uh, over under Brock Purdy snaps around? Uh, he looks pretty good right now. Hopefully he can they can Oh, he looked pretty right. good coming in the NFC Championship game too. Yeah, I I they have Will they will they decide to block Hassan Reddick? Will we game? see Sam Darnold? Hmm. I never wish injury on it. Sam anyone. Darnold, Carson Wentz, both backup quarterbacks in the NFC West. Chiefs 31, Raiders 17. Um I, yeah, I thought Raiders would get this uh cover. They got out to a 14 nothing lead and then Kansas City woke up, fell apart. As we were chuckling about the idea that the Raiders winning would would be really funny. I also had this moment of like, oh man, maybe we maybe this is one of those games you lie about the Chiefs right now. No, I I Boom, what was it like 31 unanswered almost? Yeah, I, we were we're in this bets giving contest uh for Vison. <laughs> Where you bet like fake credits over on their uh, sportsbook app there, uh, and I was considering opening it up and and seeing what <laughs> I could get on the uh, the Chiefs there. Oh yeah, but I realized I'd maxed out on the Eagles uh, minus two and a half, so <laughs> I, I had no available credits. But I definitely considered it uh, because it did feel immediately Raiders getting their their buttholes got tight, but they almost backdoored it too. So. I, I don't like if you had Kansas City minus nine, congrats, or minus ten. Hey, nice cover, but you were certainly sweating there late when Kansas City had nothing to play for, and and Vegas was marching down the field there maybe to get the back door. Yeah, I mean, I'd imagine the bounce back spot was quite quite appealing to a lot of betters. Yeah, Uh, Baltimore Ravens twenty, Los Angeles Chargers ten. I mean, Ravens were really in charge of this game. The fact that this was such a game and they needed that Zay Flowers run there at the end to get the cover was is surprising. But yeah, the, I, the it, intangibles that the Ravens have had to bring to not dominate every game they've played this year is incredible. Once again, Lamar finds a way to fumble. Once again, they make horrible decisions around um, like in game challenging when to go for it, when to not. Yeah, I mean Harbaugh is usually pretty smart. The too. play calling, like you have Lamar, you have Lamar Jackson, you should never direct snap it to a running back. It's so dumb. Especially at a shotgun on like fourth and inches. One, you should have challenged it, but then two, like just 
Why are these teams so scared of figuring out the QB sneak? It's bonkers. I, and I did think uh, I gave out Isaiah likely anytime touchdown that didn't hit, but he did end up being, oh, he was involved the, the, the Ravens leading receiver, four catches, 40 receiving yards. So he led the Bron- the Ravens in receiving yards. Uh, oh, that's right. Zay, Fla- that was a rush. Zay flowers had a 37 yard rush there at the end. Um, but yeah, so I, I Ravens looking good. Nice win for them. But Raven. really it was just like the uh, chargers are just so bad, man. So uh, I have Ravens one seed, Ravens uh, to win the the division, Ravens to win the AFC, all in my pocket. Mm. Feel horrible about them to win the AFC. Love them to win the one seed though. <laughs> I how can you trust this team in a high leverage playoffs? No, they just it's and sh- even even against the Chargers, yeah, the they ch- did some really dumb shit that you go, man, is this the kind of team you are? Because I could not trust this team. Oh no, yeah, they they they're. It's like Lamar is not super intelligent about game awareness. Just that's it. Everything else he's super intelligent, but game awareness he is not. Hey Ryan, we got some Monday Night Football props coming up. Before we do that, shout to Factor Meals. Oh, it's the holiday season. You're traveling. Uh, you don't have time to make your meals. I mean, I know I was in Vegas for a week. It's always tough. Uh, I mean, there's some great places to go out to dinner, but you, you know what I mean? Like you need that uh, nutritious, convenient meal energized to keep you going on these jam packed days. And you got to switch to factor. That's right. No prep meals ready in just 20 or sorry, 20 minutes. No, they're ready in two minutes. Code SGPN 50 for 50% off. Uh, these factor meals are delicious. And again, the holidays Think how many times where it's like, oh, we got, what are we doing for dinner? We were just at so and so's for this holiday thing. We had to come back late. Everyone's tired, half hung over. You don't want to get out everything and put together a meal. That's why Factor is here. Looking for calorie conscious options over the holidays that also taste good? Try the delicious dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around uh, 500 or less calories per serving. And it's great. You know, my wife's a vegetarian. They got veggie meals for her. They got meatitarian meals for me. Head to factormeals.com slash SGPN50 and use code SGPN50 to get 50% off. That's code SGPN50 at factormeals.com slash SGPN50. Get 50% off. Kramer, what are we doing? Props. Props. And by the way, I we got to talk to Factor. Maybe we can do a mm. special edition Madden Turducken next year. Oh, for, yeah, he's one of those guys who will get penetration. But imagine the size of the package. I hope they can figure out how to two minute two du- Turducken. That's that's a uh, alliteration. We got a product, Sean. Maybe yes. maybe we keep that for our own store. Yeah, props. All right, so uh, d- digging into this game, it does it it, it kind of two things that I, I w- was struck by. One, the numbers, you look at adjusted line yards, you look at adjusted sack rate. The Bears have a good offensive line. Yeah. The eyes, oh, they, well, ju- d- the field, Bajan, they, they're getting, they're running around a lot. They're getting sacked. So this feels like uh, the numbers faking us out a little bit. And I think it's drawn the sack number for this game down. Hmm. Over four and a half sacks for the game, minus 135. Now, if you're looking to get down, on some underdog stuff. They don't offer game stuff like this, but you can do Justin Fields over three sacks taken and you can do Josh Dobbs over two oh, sacks okay. taken. So if, if you're building something and maybe you like one team or over the other, uh, feel free to pick and choose there. Uh, my, my angle is more about just, I think there's going to be pressure in this game. I think both quarterbacks are going to run into some sacks. You look at Justin Fields uh, game log from this year. Again, Justin Fields uh, over or sorry higher than three sacks taken. He's taken four three four three six four, and then two in the last game. Sean, that means you're only losing in one out of the seven games that he's played this year, and so oh Bears God. side is probably a little stronger because of how insanely uh, bad Justin Fields is at running into pressure at times. <laughs> But I would say on the other side, you take a look at uh, Mr. Dobbs, higher than two sacks taken. Uh, he's taken two, one, three, two, four, two, three, one. T- uh, again, most of the games, you're 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 definitely either winning or pushing. And so, again, if you're if you can find the four and a half. 
for the game, take that. I think there's going to be a ton of sacks. But if you're if you're playing over on underdog, take the higher on the three or two sacks taken. Like I said, Fields I think is the stronger play. Who would you take? Dobbs to take two or more sacks or Fields to take three or more? I gotta mm. take I gotta take Fields with that pass rush with Flores. I, yeah, I, would, I mean Field Fields. I I think it's kind of even. I would maybe go Dobbs. Uh, just because it's one less, right? You said it's two or more for Dobbs. Yeah. yeah. So I, I guess I would go with that. I mean, I think they're both probably good. I like the angle. Um. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. So four and a half for the game, minus one thirty-five. Little juice, but I, I, it gets there. For me, give me Justin Fields over fifty-two and a half rushing yards. Vikings are just kind of middle of the field or middle of the pack, rather, when it comes to. Stopping the run hmm. and uh, or against the QB run, I mean, Justin Fields system he, play. Nah, he loves running the ball. Fifty two and a half just feels way too low. It's not quite as it, as bonkers as the um, as the matchup he had against. Uh, sorry, against Detroit. the Lions, but he's still averaging almost six yards a carry against the Vikings. Uh, in three games, he's put up 128, which I realize if you split it by three, he wouldn't quite get there. But I do think uh, he'll get there just on the carries. Like he's good for eight, nine carries a game. 52 and a half feels very doable. So I'm not doing a great job selling this, but Justin Fields just loves running the ball. Uh, he's bound to get a couple, uh, uh, you know, and, he, and he's decently athletic. So it there was some thoughts of like, oh, maybe he's coming back from injury. They're not going to run him as much. That's clearly, they threw that out the window. He's going to run a bunch. Uh, fields over fifty-two and a half rushing yards. Easy money. Let's go. Easy money. All right. Prop number two. A little bit of a theme here. I think both of these teams will and have struggled against the running back in the receiving game. I know Roshan Johnson is like the receiving back, but Khalil Herbert is all the way back, and I think mm. Khalil Herbert is the guy that this coaching staff likes, and I think. You read what they've been oh. saying this week leading up to this game. He is ready to b- go back into his bell cow role. So I fully anticipate Khalil Herbert to be out there a lot. I'm going to take his over 10 and a half receiving yards, Sean. It's nice and low. Ooh, okay. Give me one screen pass, maybe two. He's got great vision. Uh, he's definitely a, a better uh, pass catching back than peop- than than the fantasy nerds would, would have you uh, believe. And, and and I like you said it, this is probably one catch, maybe two. So give me uh, and I like the ten and a half receiving yards better than the one and a half catches. Breaking oh. news, Ryan. Uh, I, the chat had to alert me to this. Um, this what is, happened? A, a line just flashed in the Eagles 49ers game, and you will not believe what has happened. Well, I, well, I know I know what the number is. I, I'm, I'm you you hadn't looked at all. It, did They're it, gonna make the Eagles. Did it get to three? Home dogs and San Fr- against San Francisco. Did it get to three? It's plus one and a half. Oh, that's it. Okay, it was up to t- it. it was, just so you know, is that two and a half? Two and a half. It opened home at two dogs. And a half. It opened at two and a half. Jalen Hurts. Have you watched this guy win every fucking game? Again, I think uh, my power rankings have the 49ers are road favorites here. They're a very physical team and. Uh, they're coming, have extra rest and Friday, midnight East, 9 PM on the West coast. Um, we will be doing a segment dogs, picking dogs. Oh, I think yeah. it's time to bring out the, uh, the Lane Johnson dog picture. Dog. It's a good time to break that out. So, I, yeah. I cannot believe this price speaking of, of unbelievable prices. And if you like uh, 49ers laying one and a half. Get that over at bet 365 sports gaming podcast.com slash bet 365. So you can, you can help us out. Keep the pirate ship afloat here. Josh Dobbs. Anytime touchdown. Did you look at this price, Ryan? No, but let me, let's play the game. Yes, I will. I will double check it over at bet 365 to confirm it has not changed. But what do you think Josh Dobbs just to score a touchdown rushing or receiving? I like that you get the receiving option. Yeah, plus one. He, he it'll be priced somewhere between plus one fifty and plus and plus two hundred. Maybe plus one sixty five. Keep going. Really, it's higher. Plus two hundred. Okay, uh, that's high. That's the high end of the range. Yeah, for a guy who has gotten a touchdown in his last five games. Again, <laughs> we like taking rushing quarterbacks. Yeah, and and guys like Dobbs to get touchdown. You, you saw him in that Broncos game. 
There was nothing there. A lot of other quarterbacks would throw the ball away. Josh Jobs goes, I want to be a millionaire. I want to go to space. Give me that fucking end zone. And he runs into the end zone. Like the guy's playing for his life. Of course he's going to get a touchdown. Plus 200, two to one for a guy who's had touchdowns in five straight games. Justin Fields. He's his, hot. I'm going to keep riding him. Justin Fields' price is plus 150, I think. Yeah, which I don't. How I don't, many rushing touchdowns do you think Justin Fields has this year? I don't think he has had a ton because he's been hurt. And then I feel like he's had some big yardage games, but not big touchdown games. I will go three rushing touchdowns. One. Really? Yeah. One. See, uh, how many do you think Josh Dobbs has? Uh, five at least. Six. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's good. I, you know, this makes me think, and I'm going to fire up uh, after I give out my next one, I'll, uh, I'll fire up uh, underdog to see. Sometimes they have the rivals where you can go uh, heads up. I wonder if they have, I would love to take a touchdown a uh, one versus uh, the other. Give me Josh Dobbs heads up. Oh, a half versus oh, well. Justin Fields. Hmm. It's probably pretty put? similar, but I'd rather like, it, it'd be more fun to play against fields than it would just to play. Yeah, but if you're getting two to one on field scoring, then he wouldn't even be the favorite. You would get like plus a half, right? Well, you would you would get it would, you'd move a line. So yeah, okay. I think the, it would be bigger than two to one. But yeah, either way, it's a good price. I mean, ba- I, I don't quite understand why you're still serving him up at two to one. Then that's bet three sixty five. I saw people in the chat uh, asking where you could get that price. Sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash bet three sixty five. All right, keeping it on theme. I'm going to give out a, a second running back to go over mm. their receiving yards. And it's the same number, 10 and a half. And it's Ty Chandler. Kids got some pop. Every time we see him uh, run, we've been, we've been mentioning it in the office. Looks really electric compared to Mr. Madison. And what are the bears awful at defending the pass? We watched it last week with Detroit. Jameer, they just kept running these like screen passes. And some teams just are bad at defending these plays. The Bears have been bad at it. So Ty Chandler, over ten and a half receiving yards. Again, nice and low. If you want to build a ladder around this, um, um, these are ladder compatible props. Ooh, I got a ladder too. I do too. It's not related. Uh, it's 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 kind of a cousin to one of these. But I wanted to give out some ladder compatible props so people can you know be creative, build their own ladder, get their own birdies out of the tree. Or kitties. Birdies. No, you leave. Birdies the, like to be in the. Yeah, tree. you leave the birds in the tree, right? You can't take them out. Uh, yeah, what are you gonna do? A little, a little bit. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want our audience ripping down a mama bird. Uh, my last regular prop here. Give me Alex Ander Madison under forty-five and a half rushing yards. I know he went over last game. He had eighty-one, but for the most part, he's not been that good. And and the Bears defense has gotten um, significantly better the past few games. I think I think Vikings get it done, but I think they're moving the ball in the air. To your point, Ryan, receiving yards to the running back, the tight end, Hawkinson, Oliver, maybe even Justin Jefferson pops his head up, decides to play. Um, but Madison, without the exception of that game, previous six games didn't go over forty five and a half. I think this is a under game for him. So give me Alexander Madison under forty five and a half. Well, what's shows. wild about that Stop. is if you can go all the way back to the pre the last game they played against Chicago. He's had four games with 16 or more carries. And he's only gone over that number once. Yeah. Think about that. That's insane. inefficiency. in fact, last game against the bears, 18 for 44, Sean, that's, that's 2.4 yards of carry. It's not very good. No, not going to do it. In fact, I'm just kind of scanning through this. He he's got way, a ton of games where he's sub four yards of carry. Maybe, maybe it was a bad idea to move on from Dalvin cook. All right. You want to do a ladder? Oh yeah. All right. Well, let's stick with uh, kind of on brand with what you're saying there, fading uh, Mr. Madison because we like Ty Chandler better. Let's go back to Ty Chandler in the receiving game, but not yards. Receptions. Mm. Here's the ladder. Over one and a half catches is minus one ten. Two and a half plus one eighty. Three and a half plus four hundred. Four and a half is plus eight thirty, and five and a half is seventeen to one. I love this. You watch the Bears play. You got to attack them with the screen game. Yeah. He's the guy. Uh, they, they, they see the coaches now in uh, successive weeks, you've read stuff about how he's earned more opportunities in the last game that he played, Sean got too many tabs open here. Let me find my, uh, in the last, uh, I'll just 
In the last game he played, I believe he's coming off a four target, four catch game. So let's uh, YOLO it. Yeah, four catches uh, for 37 yards. He had a long of 19. Again, get him involved in the passing game. He did have 10 carries too. Um, so hopefully it's not a ton of rushing game, but maybe this is his game. Maybe they put put Madison on the on the on the bench finally. And I thought about going Ty Chandler rushing yards for the ladder. It felt a little cute. So I went receptions. Play the over one and a half all the way up to five and a half. And and you can definitely find that in uh far away places. All right, for me, my ladder, Ryan. Tyler Scott. Really? Yeah, rookie receiver. Uh mostly because the the opening oh. ladder rungs are so low. I mean, if he gets if he gets he's a rookie. If he gets 39 yards plus 305. If he gets 49 yards plus 605. If he has 58 yards, that's plus 1019. Just to get 59 yards in a game as a receiver, that's one play. Uh, if he gets 69 yards, that's as high as the ladder goes, plus 1889 and if you uh, were paying attention to Justin Fields' press conference, they asked him. He he kind of misjudged a a bad ball in their yeah. loss, um, and Justin Fields went out of his way to say, "I don't care if you keep dropping the balls because everybody we have our own individual responsibility to help this team be successful. I'm going to throw him the ball, and if he drops it, it's his responsibility to catch his ball. That's his job. He gets paid to do it. I'm not losing faith in him in one games, two games, however many games. I'm going to keep going back to him. He's going to be a great receiver." So if there ever was a potential for a breakout game, it might be Tyler Scott in a dome against this Vikings defense. So uh, let's get real. He's, he hasn't played well. His numbers are so low for a reason, but I, I think there's room outside of DJ Moore for that next guy. Now maybe it's Darnell Mooney who have had some success with his ladders. I think Tyler Scott is the play here. Uh, Tyler Scott, uh, decent a dot. I was looking it up while you're talking there. No, cause he can. Uh, I all it takes honestly is like one 35 yard pass and then like a screen and he's uh, good. It's not the best day. He's got like a comparable A dot to Deontay Johnson. So you're gonna need a little bit, but you know, maybe we can, can can we get three or four catches? Yeah. Probably what you need. He had two for nineteen uh, last time they played. Or sorry, two for twelve. Which ties his career high of two catches. So look out. Here he comes, Ryan. I, he's in like forty percent of the snaps. He's getting targets. Oh, I like it. I'm I'm in. I'm it's in. it's 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 one of these fun low ladders. Uh <laughs> I'm just reading the chat. Uh Thomas says Purdy is going to quit on his team. I I already love it. Rivalry week starts early. Are you yeah, I, I uh are you you're not nervous at all? Nervous? Oh, I mean I'm nervous every game. It's the National Football League, right? You take it one game at a time. But again, I feel confident knowing that my hands rest in the face uh in Jalen Hurts just has to win a game at home. Like my chances. I would have taken. I, I liked him at two and a half better because I, you know, I like to take. Uh, no, take it's it great. To, great, still a great teaser. Like. I would. I if I was making this number, I'd make it Eagles minus six. Hmm. I mean, if you're looking for what I think the actual outcome will be, I understand your power ratings might not have it that way, but I. I well, no, you want full. Uh, I'm very. I'm very. I'll be very surprised if the Niners close the favorite. Okay. No, I. I I'm no, surprised I, like, they opened the favorite. I think there's a couple spreads out there. I, at I think, home. Here's what I. We're say. at home. You go look at the board right now. There's three teams that are laying two and a half or less on the road, and you wonder why. Gardner Minshew's another one. Desmond Ritter. So Desmond Ritter, Brock Purdy, and Gardner Minshew all laying two points on the road right now. I think they're all wrong. Just all look right. at his last thirty starts. <laughs> what are they talking about? Uh, first touchdowns. Let's get to it and jump ahead. Justin Fields. I mean, he's kind of their goal line back at ten to one. That's yes, the wrong please. price. That's so. I'm on him too. That's ridiculous. Josh Dobbs also like him eleven to one. I like him anytime touchdown. I mean. In some ways, I almost like his anytime better at two to one, but uh, also like at first. Going back to Josh Oliver, who he hit uh, 40, 50 to one, depending on where you got it. Yeah, I see even saw a couple 60 to ones. Shout out to you guys. Hashtag Dejans only. I'm seeing 33 to one right now. And then Ryan turned me on to the fact that Mercedes Lewis is now the backup tight end in Chicago. 75 to one. 75 to one for a guy who's getting, who has red zone targets. 
I the fact that he's still in the league is remarkable to me. Yeah, it's like that weird Jimmy Graham touchdown that the NFL never explained to us. And then he just never caught another just, pass. Just disappeared. He had a <laughs> he had a medical incident. And then he never... came back and he caught a touchdown. Speaking of medical incidents, did you see uh, a completely unrelated, but Chandler Jones uh pop back up on Instagram? No. Don't check it out. Chandler... I'm, I'm warning the audience, don't watch the video. But Mercedes Lewis has a red zone catch this year and he's seventy five to one. And he's the backup tight end. And you look at his snap share, it's not bad. I mean, yeah, he's I, he, he's on the field. <laughs> yeah, it's cr- it's a crazy price. Oh wow! He's he had seven uh, percent of the snaps, which was down. He's he for the most part he's been like fifteen percent, and it seems like he's ahead of the depth. Or no, sorry, uh, I was looking at the wrong thing. He's up to forty percent of the snaps. Yeah. I mean, look, they don't yes, re- they don't just swap guys on the depth chart for no reason. No. Forty percent of the snaps with the red zone catch. He has two catches this year, one of which was in the red zone. Seventy-five to one, Mercedes Lewis. You heard it here first. Uh, yeah, mine's lame. I yeah, you kind of. I was I was leaning to maybe going a different direction with the Vikings, but it's it's a system play. I'm just playing quarterbacks and running backs. Dobbs and Fields both being ten to one. I, I, again, I don't. I don't know who's making these prices. The first touchdown market for this Monday night game is very unique, in that there's a bunch of uh, folks in the eight to fourteen to one range. But having Fields and Dobbs at ten to one is wrong. I'm all. I'm also going two guys I already talked about, but Herbert and Chandler. Also, I think. I think both mm-hmm. of these teams, and it's not necessarily running game stuff. I think both of these teams are also very vulnerable to the running back uh, through the passing attack. So. Both those guys are twelve to one. Feels like I bottled up all the goal line runners, with the exception of maybe Alex Madison uh, for the Vikings. Uh, and so spreading it around, not not going to make any sort of massive win like the Mercedes. If Mercedes Lewis comes in, uh, God help us all. Uh, well, just, that's that would be an all time. It's awesome. I mean, I feel like we've played Mercedes Lewis. We Bears have been on prime time a bunch. So we played him at least. This might be the third Mercedes Lewis. No, I think second. But he's definitely. We did a first quarter touchdown for Mercedes Lewis, uh, which was a bit reckless. But we're back on the Mercedes Lewis train. Hey, um, before you give out our DJ's only parlay, of course, sign up over at Hall of Fame Bets. That's right. All you got to do: download the Hall of Fame Bets app. Use the promo code SGPN. Get that sweet fifty uh, percent off your first month. Start betting smarter, not harder. It is the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, game lines. If you're watching on YouTube. You can see green, good, red, not good. It's the you know, same kind of handicapping we're doing uh, by digging through the box scores, seeing snap count, um, you know, win probability, all that kind of stuff. Very good at formulating. Like, hey, I like uh, Taysom Hill anytime touchdown. How many times has that happened in his last twelve games? Twenty four, whatever it is. Very easy to use. Very easy to figure out. Just go to hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get fifty percent off your first month. Start researching. Start winning with Hall of Fame bets. Kramer, I was just. Uh, looks like uh, week five. You played Mercedes Lewis as a seventy-five to one shot against the Commanders. Okay. Love documentation. Very important. Sounds about right. Yeah. Get all the sh- documented sheets over on our Patreon. And uh, can't wait to announce the winner of this week's Patreon Pick'em, which is a autographed uh, John Madden item. Still debating which item it is, but we will get you that item. And a uh, shout out to Kyle P., uh, big time Vikings fans. He won the Patreon Pick'em last week, which was a uh, $100 Circa Sports NFL future. He of course got me to put in on the Minnesota Vikings. I got mm. it in All right. before the uh before the um before the, the before the Monday night game. So if they get that win, uh, you know, get hey. some good value. Yes. And shout out to uh Peter pointing out only twelve likes. Come on, guys. Don't make us beg for likes. We're not we're begging. not we're not these basic YouTubers. So there's hundred and four live listeners, live watchers. Smash that button. Come on. Smash. I just in real time. Right, I'm, not gonna, up, I, I'm not gonna give out my oh, parlay. Okay. I'm not gonna do it. And I just if in, people in, don't like it, why would I give it up? In real time, I looked up a uh, historical record of something that happened on this show. Yes. In a matter of you know, a couple thousand milliseconds. One click. Pretty impressive. One click right. can make all the difference. I'll I'll uh only let, you. Let's see. I, I am a 
Oh, there we go. Likes are coming in. I'm I'm a little bit of a, a slut, so I'll just give out my par likes. I okay. really like it. You whore. Vikings minus two and a half. Very shocked to see this number come down under three. Here at Herbert, anytime touchdown. I okay. do think he finds the end zone. Bears lose a fumble. This just feels like taking candy from a baby. <laughs> Ty Chandler, forty receiving yards. Ooh. That's that's where I maybe step out of bounds a little bit. And then Sean, you motivated me. Tyler Scott, over seven and a half receiving yards. Okay, hundred and ten. Oh my god! <laughs> Hopefully Tyler Scott's not the one that doesn't uh, come home for you. you. Say I should take it out. No, no, no. It'd just be funny. If you were way more confident before. All right, my uh, DJ's only parlay: Josh Dobbs touchdown, <laughs> Justin Fields touchdown, Josh Oliver touchdown. Vikings win by three. Ryan, guess the price. Although, don't don't be mean. And guess I, I was going to do it right. I was going to do it okay. right. Ryan, what do you think that pays? Sixteen to one. Eighty-five oh to one. Oh my god! Over on sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash bet three sixty five. I was so off. Hey guys, thank you as always for tuning in. Make sure you Smash! that subscribe button. Toss us a nice uh, rating and review over on Apple Podcasts. Got some gift cards. Uh, burning in my pocket to give out to some uh, accurate and good reviewers. And um, yeah, of course, we'll be back tomorrow, aka Monday. We got college basketball, college football. We got it all. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean at Second the Money Green. He's Ryan. Sean uh, mentioned it, but doubleheader tomorrow basketball in the morning, football at night. Kramer, let it ride.